It was great to just see the boys in their massive jerseys and shorts, everything so big, and just see them, you know, just like, like kids everywhere, having a good time before the games, trying to stay busy, getting their team talk, and then going to, to warm up, and just, you know, it just looked like they had a, a great time together. All right, so we're here in the province of Buenos Aires, but very close to one of Rivers training facilities, very close to the AFA, the Argentine Federation's facilities. We're gonna watch the River boys. They're all looking about seven, eight years old. They have a, a friendly, an amistoso, uh, with this local club that's hosting. But now we've got the boys coming out. There's a lot of mosquitoes because it's a rural area. It's been raining so much. It's been so much hotter than normal in, in Buenos Aires this summer. I'm curious about this here, if you can see, I think this is going to be like in the U.S. We have our, our build out line or the 18. When we arrived here, one of the boys with his dad on a bicycle it was far. Emmy said it was a far ride, probably close to 40 minutes to an hour, but it was straight. So they were able to get here on the bike. They've been telling me it's like a community, right? Football is like community to share, to connect with people. It's to share just like an asado is to share. Football is to share together. Hello everybody, it is Andrew with Because Football again, welcoming you back to another amazing adventure here in Argentina. Really amazing inside scoop and behind the scenes look at the youngest ages here. We're talking about under nine, under eight, under seven, the wonder kids, the next, next generation, the boys who will be making their professional debuts in a decade's time. And again, we're with River Plate because I had the great fortune to meet Emiliano Morelli, known as Emmy. Emmy is a coach of the 2015 River Boys, so the under nines. He was originally born in Brooklyn, New York. And when he was very young, he moved back to Argentina where he grew up. In his earlier twenties, he moved back to New York. He got involved in coaching with some local clubs there. So he's someone who understands the youth game in the United States and everything it entails, as well as here in Argentina. He's worked with many local clubs and then he worked his way up to Independiente. And then a few years ago, he joined River Plate. So I had made plans to meet Emmy at his house. Of course, I was wearing this lovely Because Football kit, courtesy of Icarus. Anyway, I finally arrived to Emmy's. He greets me warmly and I tried my first mate, so he shared it and he explained the process of mate to me as we pass it back and forth. We got to talking about youth football in the United States, maybe some of the strengths and weaknesses and comparing it to, to Argentina. You know, things about how in the US, we culturally, we don't have as strong as a connection in most cases. So because of that, kids aren't watching the game, they're not experiencing the game constantly. And so when it comes to decision-making and kind of having that feel for the game, that so much of that has to come from the coach. In contrast, in Argentina, I mean, was saying that because it is a part of the culture and because all the players, they, they kind of understand how the game should be played, at least in the Argentine style, or they have their own ideas about it. So even at young ages, they can be a little bit more, let's say, a little more hard-headed, a little more stubborn and see things their own way. And we were saying how part of that's positive, that the players take ownership and responsibility for the, the game, but also as a coach, when you have a certain vision, you know, so he was saying how in the US, the kids were so coachable, it was so organized, you know, it's very professional, but obviously there are some shortcomings. But then in Argentina, much more of a connection to the game. And so it was just, just really, fascinating to hear like his take because he's experienced both worlds you know after a while he started to to get the pizza ready so we had an amazing uh, homemade pizza he he rolled the dough he cooked it on his parisha or the the grill that is very common to many argentine households uh, and then after a little bit his son his son came home from school and then two of his fellow coaches from river so we had pablo esquivel you can see here pablo has quite a resume of his own as a coach and a scout he scouted Enzo Fernandez, who you will know as, as someone who cemented his place as a, a regular in the, the World Cup winning team for Argentina in 2022. Top, top central midfielder in the world. He also scouted uh, Ezequiel Palacios. Palacios also came up with River, is currently with Bayer Leverkusen, 
and also was a part of that World Cup winning side for Argentina. So pretty solid resume. And he joked that in his right eye, he saw Enzo and his left eye, he saw uh, Palacio. So we want to protect those eyes, but uh, great to meet him. And then we also met Nahuel Urus Dorasu. He is the coach of the, the 2017, so the youngest boys for River. Great to get to, to get to know the both of them before the matches started to share pizza with them. Like they were saying, whether it's pizza, whether it's a, an asado, you know, a traditional Argentine uh, barbecue. I asked them, Hey, where's the best place to get asado? And Paolo said, ah, the best is not important. The important thing is sharing it together. I really felt welcomed into, into, uh, into their group and got to talk to them as not only about Argentine culture, but also how they see themselves as, you know, living their passion. And sure, it is a, a job for them. However, they see it as more than that. They're developing young people through football. They feel very fortunate to be in that position, but they also see that it goes beyond just being a coach. So if the boys need anything, whether it's support with the family, with school, the boys are coming from lower class neighborhoods from disadvantaged and underserved neighborhoods and so they don't always have the the food to eat the nutrition uh so so they want to support the boys beyond just the fields so really refreshing to hear that even at such a high level as river the top in argentina in south america and, and by extension the world you know one of the clubs that produces some of the top players um and, and a high number of them that even even at River at this, this high echelon of, of football, there is that emphasis on, on developing the individual and developing the person. That's something, unfortunately, I don't even hear a lot at the lower levels of, of football and grassroots football and grassroots soccer in the United States. The competitive piece, the development piece, tends to, tends to get more of the spotlight. So it was really refreshing to hear that even at this high level, that there's a focus on developing the individual, on having the right manners, on conducting yourself the right way. And then that extends to the, the behavior and the, the conduct of the parents. So again, a really tranquil, relaxed atmosphere. After talking to the, the coaches, after talking to Emmy and Nahuel, they're saying just the values for River is, is number one, you know, as a parent, don't overcomplicate things for your child. Allow the coach to teach. And that is where the message should come from. And that is the voice that they should hear. Es muy complicado por Para los, los niños. Sí. Muchos, sí. Mensajes. Muchos mensajes. Yo le sí. puedo decir, vos jugá por allá. El padre sí. le dice, vos jugá sí. por acá. La madre el, le dice, y, vos jugá por allá. Y él digo el, el chico, puesto. Son sí. muchos mensajes en la cabeza sí. del nene que después hace que no puedan jugar de la mejor manera sí. y empiezan a llorar y están más sí. tensos. And so, even at, at the high level of River, this is something that we face in the U.S. and, and around the world of parents wanting to help, parents wanting to, to show and, and support their, their kids but it's it's complicating things it's too many messages and also at river it's it's absolutely a privilege not only for the coaches to be a part of the club but for the players and the families too so if you're not buying in if you're not agreeing to the standards and the values of the club ciao you know there's there's a whole line of players from all over the country and the continent who would love to have a spot with river who would love to be a part of that academy so they're not going to to waste time uh, and they're not going to tolerate people who aren't in line with their values and culture. Ellos tienen que saber que están defendiendo la camiseta del club más grande de Argentina. En entienden los niños que especial son son chicos, pero eh, entienden los que especial es a, a jugar por River. Sí, los chicos yo, nosotros siempre decimos que Un niño de seis años no es lo mismo que un jugador de fútbol de seis años. Sí. El jugador de fútbol tiene otra mente totalmente distinta. Y acá los chicos saben que juegan en River, saben que son superiores sí. al resto, pero nosotros tenemos que tratar de que ellos tengan esa confianza, pero que la confianza no los lleve a, a faltar el respeto, o a sobrar, sí. o, a, sí. o a pensar sí. que ya está. Sí, es una. En inglés, we say like a. Sí, fun, fine line. Fine sí, line. Fine line. Exacto. Exacto. Sí. Sí, pero. Y, Y a veces la línea se, se pasa. Es, es, se, se pasa. Bueno, pero nosotros, aparte de ser técnicos, somos educadores. Entonces sí. tenemos que educar al chico con respeto. Viste, como digo, saludamos a sí. todo el mundo. Buenos días, buenas tardes. Por más que ellos sean mejores jugadores de fútbol, nosotros no tenemos que hacer que ellos que piensen que ya son Messi. Sí. El camino es largo sí. y tienen que trabajar muchísimo todavía. Sí. Sí. Y como, como antes, nosotros uh, hablamos... Uh, Como entrenador, sí. tenemos la responsabilidad de, de venir 
y hay, hay uh, crecer los, los, las personas, no solo los jugadores. Sí, primero la persona. Sí, sí. Primero la persona porque ellos quizás hoy vinieron 50 jugadores y quizás ninguno va a ser jugador profesional. Sí. Son muy pocos los que llegan, sí. pero todos van a seguir siendo personas. Sí. Entonces nosotros también tenemos que educar desde ese lado. Incluso en Rivers. De, incluso, de en River, sí. incluso en River es muy difícil sí, que un chico llegue categoría. a ser profesional. Sí. Estos chicos tienen 7 años sí. para ser profesional. Si son profesionales, faltan más de 10. Even given a context of a, a super competitive it, like industry and a super competitive football culture where recent players from River who, who are going to be making on a world stage you now are now in their teenage years, but are certainly going to be playing in Champions League, World Cups, Copa Americas. One of these players was scouted from another province at eight years old, all right? So we all know the Messi story as, you know, 11, 12 year old moving to Barcelona. They moved his family over, they gave his parents a house, they gave his parents livelihoods, you know, to support Messi as a 12 year old. Well, for River, they've done as early as young as eight years old, bringing families and supporting them in a similar way. So even within that context, there is still the standard and the expectation of conducting yourself the right way, of acting the right way. So after talking a bit more about youth football, about culture in Argentina and our role as coaches that, that we share, then it was time to go to the match. So we, we all squeeze into the car to San Martin de Monte Grande. The match kicked off at about 2.30. Uh, so in Argentina, Many of the schools are like half day. And so if you're a footballer, you go to school in the morning. So then your afternoons are free to go to training and have matches. Uh, each of the river teams were playing a team one year older. I would say the biggest thing from all the matches that stuck out was just uh, comfort with the ball in tighter spaces uh, and then just general decision making and composure. If I'm thinking of the United States, even some of uh, some levels I've seen within in Europe or other parts of the world, if the ball ends up in the air, it's bouncing, Most kids, just because they're very young, their tendencies, they just want to smash it. Anytime the ball was bouncing, unless it was a 50-50 challenge where the defender had to step in and just clear it, the players would try to bring the ball down and, and, and possess and keep it. Little things like the, the first touch on the ball, even though Nahuel had said to me that, that even here in Argentina, a culture that's so intertwined where the boys often have a ball at their feet where it's a part of daily life, they're seeing less of the free organic street play that they did in previous generations. So they still do a lot of technical work in a two hour session. The first hour is, is mostly technical. So that really surprised me as well. But you can still see there is just that natural instinct, that natural connection and comfort with the ball. And as Emmy was telling me for River, what they're, what they're looking for in the profile of a young player, they want a team of number 10s. Maybe some other clubs are looking for athleticism or looking for that competitiveness. But for River, they're looking for players who are good on the ball, who know the game, and, and then they'll find their positions, but they want a team of 10s. And so that really stuck out to me. The coaching attitude and, and energy again, quite relaxed and didn't hear any screaming. It was very supportive, a lot of clapping, a lot of, you know, well done's, a lot of high fives. You can see that they really do try to just keep it fun for the boys and there is structure and there are boundaries and the boys know how they're expected to act and perform because even as six, seven, eight year olds, they understand that it is a privilege to play for River. None of the games were particularly high scoring. They were all pretty close, pretty competitive matches. And there wasn't any any stick or any, any complaints given to the referee from the coaches, from the parents. I also got to meet Rosario Nanya, who's the, the coordinator of all the younger age groups for River. He scouted Leo Paredes, who was, of course, in the World Cup winning team, has played for PSG and other top teams. He scouted uh, Gonzalo Montiel, who scored the winning PK for Argentina against France to win the World Cup. Sebastian Triussi, who's, who's uh, playing in MLS. You know, somebody who's, who's, again, really seen a lot of the top, top players. And so I asked him, like, when you see your boys on TV playing in the World Cup, like, how do you feel? And so he said, of course, it gives him goosebumps. It's very touching and emotional, and, and he's happy for their success is on the pitch but more than anything he's just happy that their families are taken care of that their families are uh, comfortable now given the status given the financial security that being a professional footballer can provide that is is the biggest thing that he thinks about so again there's the emphasis on the individual on the family on the community that is central to everything uh, and then and this is why we push. This is why we try to develop players to a higher level. So we're talking about top, top, top tier. This isn't just like par get a participation trophy type of thing. This is legitimate levels uh, on a global scale. 
it's great to access the professional clubs, see what they're doing and learn from them. Overall, you know, in a, another amazing day. So gracias to uh, Emmy, to Nahuel, to Pablo, Rosario, to, to everyone from River and from San Martin de Monte Grande for being supportive and welcoming me uh, and letting me, you know, experience and, and share their story. That is it. We hope you enjoyed this video about the youngsters of Argentine football. There is definitely more to come. There is definitely more to come in terms of really digging deeper into the communities here. That's something that I am certainly on a journey for. So that's something I want to share with all of you that people want to share. They are very proud of, of their pride for football. They're proud of the intensity and passion that Argentina has. They understand that it is what the world knows about Argentina. And so they're very proud to share it, very proud and, and very welcoming. Please make sure you share this with someone that you think would get something out of it. I think we're offering unique glimpses and we're going deeper than what just an Instagram reel or a TikTok video might offer. Like it, that's huge for us. Leave us a comment about your thoughts, what really stuck out to you most about this video. And of course, please subscribe so you can see more in the future. We're really on a roll here in Argentina and we've got so much to share about this footballing hotbed that is Buenos Aires. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias por todos, por ver. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one.